Scott. Welcome to Pain Coach. I'm Chris Fornatero here to help simplify oil pain so you can get better faster. All right, first off, I want to let you know I have a Patreon page now. So if you like this uh, video tutorial I'm doing here and you want to see the longer version, the hour and 15 minute long version, the version where you see every single brush stroke, you can go to the link in the description below, become a Patreon. It's only five bucks a month and I'm going to be releasing multiple video tutorials a month. I'll be releasing the short versions here on YouTube and the longer in-depth versions on Patreon. There's also an, a tier there where you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. So if that's something you're looking into, check it out. Uh, as always, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, uh, leave your questions in the comments section. I will answer them or use them to make another video. Uh, if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can do that uh, at, on Instagram at fours of 43. This is just a good exercise to uh, teach you how to handle values. So let's go. All right, so talk about my setup first I got a uh, oil primed linen uh, canvas board picture here my iPad got my palette I got my colors talk about that later I got this as a, uh, as a proportional divider but I'll be using this just to make the initial drawing I got a just piece, a pencil here you can use pencil sometimes you can use paint I'll do that sometimes I'm just gonna use a pencil keep it easy uh, and the first thing I'm gonna do is mark out where like the major uh, thing, you know, major points are on the face. So I'm gonna get going here. I'm just gonna just kind of see first if this uh, setting with the little orange knob here is right. And I'm just gonna kind of see how tall the entire head would be if it will fit on my canvas. All right, so the top of that there, bottom of there. Let's see width wise here. Just going from the furthest parts of the hair. First parts would be out there. All right, it should be pretty good. From the bottom of the chin to the top of the hair, which kind of goes up to there. Even though the hair is off more to the left, but just to know where we are here. Put a little mark right there, the chin. I know this hair is going to be up here, but it's going to be kind of over here a bit. I'm just figuring out where things are. It's roughly around there. Putting in the um, eyes here, I don't I'll just look at the you know the part of the eye that I'm drawing this dark part, but also look at the white and try and replicate that shape as well. It's always good to see where things line up with other other aspects. Like I can kind of see that this. This line in the eye, just, it, it's as if it just goes you know, straight down and it continues right here. So this all lines up. So if I take that, it lines up like that. I'll just draw this eye. I'm also kind of, I'm not just looking at the shape of the eye, but the eyelid. I'm keeping eye on the eyelid. Just want to make sure I draw that in correctly and looking at that will help me draw in the eye so you want to look at not just the shape but the shapes around it because they will tell you what you're drawing is being drawn in accurately Alrighty. see a lot of times I don't even draw the eyes in like this detail because it's the way I paint. I kind of just paint the eye socket area and then go in with the eyes. And I kind of sneak up on the eyes. But for this demonstration, I'll just draw it in because probably more people are probably comfortable, more comfortable actually drawing them. Now, a good thing to do um, before you move on is making sure your drawing is good is uh, you can look at your drawing in a mirror 
and that will definitely tell you if anything is off or you can take a picture uh, with your phone and then flip it uh, horizontally and I'll tell you I think I think that's on there all right um go through my colors I got uh, uh, ultramarine blue uh, crimson uh, cad red yellow ochre uh, cad lemon titanium white and burnt umber now I'm gonna be doing something a little different today so now I'm done drawing I can kind of zoom in here and I got uh, this one is my paint thinner this is my linseed oil this little one so you can see as I I use those. Um, today I'm not going to be doing normal colors. I'm going to be doing kind of fun, vibrant colors. This is a good way to kind of practice your values. Uh, really good instructor I had when I was like 17 or 18. Didn't have him for long because I went to college, but the time I did have him, he had me do this exercise and I thought it was really, really great. And what he'd have me do. I'm not going to do it exactly, but he had me he put out a bunch of different colors on the palette. And he said, all right, you're going to paint for five minutes with this color, and then you're going to move this color and this color. And you go dark, light, you know, neutral. It was just kind of like all over the place, and it taught you how to uh, see value. So if you had ochre, yellow ochre, you had to figure out where yellow ochre would fall on the value scale. So I drew in my eyes. I always like to kind of draw these in first while I have them drawn out. I'm also still keeping in mind the drawing aspect of everything and making sure if I find any mistakes in my drawing, which like I said earlier, I'm sure there are, I catch them and I correct them as I'm painting. Like I said, these colors are going to be very, very different. <laughs> getting something on here. I'm also thinking about the shape of the head, the fact that this is a sphere, this is a highlight, and I am painting something that is a sphere, that is round. You know, I'm, I'm never forgetting that, and it's really good to know the structure of what you're painting. I'm just trying to get the values correct. I'm comparing you know, like how light this is to how dark this is, and if the difference between it is accurate to to my photo here. Because you want to get this right, because then it makes doing the detail fun, because you know you're not going to have to redo that detail. It's interesting to see what this green's doing, because I've laid down a lot of red so far. Green's a complement of red, so it's playing off of each other in interesting ways. Everything's pretty dark still. I want to lighten, definitely lighten everything up. Kind of just, I'm just, I'm just randomly picking up colors and then figuring out where it will go. So I don't think that there's any real rhyme or reason to what color I'm going to next. I just kind of making it up as I go, which is fun, at the same time a little scary. <laughs> I'm not afraid to push it, push colors into each other. That's the great thing about oils, is this doesn't, nothing's ever set in stone. You can always, you know, push a color into another color, blend them, have a whole new color. Also, once I get in these highlights, it kind of changes everything and kind of gives me a better perspective of the other colors. Once I, you know, it's the same as having your darkest dark, being able to make decisions off of, you know, the fact that you know that's darkest dark. Same goes for the light here. So I'm kind of itching to get these lights in to make some decisions on other parts. Now this hair does seem really bright, but there are some darks and there are shadows. I want to, I want to lay those in first. 
and then go over with my lights. See, so yeah, I've kind of, you know, I try and do dark to light, <laughs> but I end up just bouncing around. Pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling. That's the name of the game here. The values. This is always fun to do. Oh. All right, Albert, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? A fun way to kind of paint wrinkles is not to paint the dark part, but when you have a dark area, you paint the light in, creating the wrinkle around it. That's kind of what I'm doing here. some more areas actually. Really like that. I'll put this red in. A lot of areas. <laughs> See if I can pop this in certain places. I swear talking while painting is harder than actually painting. So, I mean, a lot of this you're not, I'm not really thinking about it. You shouldn't be thinking about it too much. You should be kind of just feeling it. You should be aware of what you're doing. But you get to a point where it's just instinct in a way. Instinct that you trained. You know, you got to learn and, and practice the right thing so you don't have to think about it kind of like learning a golf swing a call for practice and swing you know different sections breaks it down reviews it watches a video of himself swinging but when it comes time to actually play any swings he's not thinking of any of that because he's already done the work at that point it's just all all instinct Always good to do wet in the wet with the uh, hair on the hairline. When you have just like a straight, just stop at the hairline. It kind of looks a little weird. I don't know how much of this down here I want to do.
Alrighty. I'm going to wrap this up. You know, I could, I could keep working less. I probably will. Um, it's not going to be anything. It's just going to be doing the same thing that I've been doing, just getting more and more detailed. Probably break out a smaller brush or two. Kind of step back, look at it, you know, fill in little areas that I missed, soften certain areas, kind of reassess, push, pull. See areas that are too light, make them a little darker, or areas that are too dark, make them a little lighter, this kind of thing. But I think as far as a tutorial goes, you get the gist and can take away some valuable information from this. This is a great, again, it's a great exercise to do. Um, don't think of the colors so much. If you have to, pre-mix just a bunch of wild colors and, you know, set a timer if you have to and be like, all right, when it goes off in five minutes, I'm going to switch colors. And this is, you know, it's, it's going to be tough, <laughs> um, but it's fun and it's going to make you a better painter, better understanding of values, I promise. It's also going to make you, you're going to end up with these really cool, colorful paintings, and you're going to show them to your friends. You're going to be like, whoa, man, you must be really good. Look at all those colors. That's crazy. It's always, you know, people find it to be more impressive. Which I can see why, but which kind of know how it's done. It's just really understanding value. No different than I was playing this in black and white. Boom. All right, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video tutorial. If you, again, if you want to see the longer version of this, it is at my Patreon page, which is linked below. Uh, also below, I have links to uh, all the supplies that I recommend for beginners. They're Amazon links. Uh, if you want to see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can at, on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.